Throughout history, architects and engineers have consistently found ways to take buildings and materials used to create them to new limits. They've pushed structures upward to the sky, made them more resilient to the forces of nature, and introduced innovative and iconic designs. But now climate change poses an increasingly alarming threat. In a world where atmospheric warming and sea level rise are accelerating at a rapid rate, and the threat of extreme heat waves, droughts, storms, and flooding continues to surge, there's an urgent need for more efficient and resilient structures that support a low carbon economy. The construction industry has been part of the problem, but also is part of the solution. Jennifer Lake, Global Director for Energy at the World Resources Institute, an organization focused on developing sustainable systems, says the impact of construction activities and the energy they use is enormous. There's a recognition that the building and construction sector has an important role to play in driving change. It's both an opportunity and an obligation. There's a growing focus on building materials and their carbon footprint. Architects and engineers are also looking to make buildings healthier for occupants. Brent Trenga, Director of Sustainability at Kingspan Insulated Panels North America, a sustainable building materials manufacturer, says, We are reaching an inflection point where the materials, technologies, and the desire to make changes exist. Sustainability and climate change involve two increasing concerns. An August 2021 report from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change found that the world could hit the critical threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature increase by 2034, far earlier than previously expected. The UN Secretary General labeled the situation Code Red, and experts warned that drastic steps are required to curtail carbon emissions. The engineering and construction sector has a particularly large carbon footprint. The United Nations Global Status Report 2020 reported that the building sector contributed 38% of global CO2 emissions in 2019. That included greenfield development, cement production, and the burning of fossil fuels over the lifespan of projects. By contrast, Transportation produced 24% of total CO2 emissions. There are two key pieces to the carbon puzzle. First, there's the CO2 generated from the production and transport of building materials, which is often referred to as the embodied carbon in a structure. It accounts for about 11% of total carbon emissions in the building sector. The second factor is the day-to-day operation of buildings and other infrastructure. This comprises 28% of the sector's CO2 output, according to the nonprofit Architecture 2030. Some building materials, such as concrete, are especially problematic. According to Carbon Brief, a website that tracks developments in climate science and carbon reduction, approximately 8% of global CO2 originates from cement. Sheila Hollis, acting executive director of the United States Energy Association, observes, Concrete requires an enormous amount of energy to produce, and it requires a substantial upfront investment. Getting to net zero carbon by 2050, an ambitious goal to limit climate change, won't be easy. The UN Global Status Report projects 230 billion square meters of new construction over the next 40 years. That's the equivalent of adding the city of Paris to the planet every week. The energy intensity per square meter of the global building sector needs to improve on average by 30% from 2015 to 2030 to meet global climate goals. Carbon reduction goals revolve primarily around a few crucial areas. First, there's a need to lower the overall carbon impact of building materials such as concrete, metal, and glass. Second, it's critical to adopt energy-efficient systems that incorporate alternative power sources, such as solar and wind, and inch toward grid-neutral structures. Third, efficient construction methods that reduce site waste are essential. This includes water management systems and materials recycling. Technologies are emerging to address these issues. For example, 
Insulated metal panels that use steel skins with an insulated foam core can replace concrete to lower the embodied carbon of the wall system. They produce a carbon footprint that's more than 28% lower with improved performance and only minimal design changes, Trenga says. These materials also boost resilience and the durability of the structure, he adds. New and more sustainable types of concrete are also available. For example, Solidia has developed a curing process that uses CO2 rather than water to produce high-performance concrete that cures in 24 hours rather than 28 days. Alfred Gardiner, concrete technical leader and principal engineer at consulting and testing firm Brown Intertech, notes other techniques have emerged that excavate fly ash, a byproduct of burning coal for energy from landfills to use for concrete production. He says, as the production of fly ash declines due to the phase-out of coal production power plants and greater regulation, this could prove to be a valuable resource. Brown Intertech recently received a grand award in the National ACEC Engineering Excellence Awards Competition for its ASTM test methods, Cements Hardened by Carbonation Project. Gunnar Hubbard, a principal and sustainability practice leader at Thornton Tomasetti, notes, squeezing carbon out of the equation isn't only about substituting materials. There's also a growing focus on integrating technologies into building designs. This includes smart glass that relies on electrostatic methods to filter light energy and improve the energy efficiency of buildings, and new use of alternative energy sources such as solar and wind, sometimes built into structures. More holistic thinking about buildings is taking shape. Hubbard, a licensed architect, says there's a need to get the orientation of a structure right to increase the thermal performance of the envelope. We are also looking at innovative ways to reduce the loads and increase sustainability. This might include placing solar panels on roofs and embedding photovoltaic cells in the skin of a south-facing exposure. It might also require changing the depth of window overhangs or making them adjustable for maximum cooling and minimum heating during different seasons. It's also possible to shift excess heat from a data center or atrium to other zones in need of heating and design interior walls and air delivery systems to improve air flows while reducing energy consumption. For example, Buildings in nearly any climate should incorporate operable windows that can bring in outdoor air on a nice day. Hubbard explains, the challenge and the opportunity is balancing the air intake with humidity, temperature, acoustics, and in some places, pollen or particulates. Such designs have an ancillary benefit of improving the air quality of a space and making it potentially safer during a pandemic. There are many different elements that must be layered into these structures to produce super high-performance buildings. There's a need to fundamentally rethink the way we approach the design and build process, he adds. Ben Thompson, Director of Sustainability at Autodesk, which produces software for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry, says sustainable buildings are not an idealistic fantasy, they're quickly becoming mainstream. Driving this trend is an underlying change in attitudes, particularly among younger workers and increasingly driven by project owners and even governments. Yet shareholders too are demanding that companies embrace sustainability initiatives. Thompson says there's growing demand for sustainable spaces. We're seeing that 70% of institutional real estate investors have explicit environmental, social, and governance criteria in place. Indeed, there's a recognition that sustainability isn't only important for the future of the planet. It's economically attractive. Thompson observes it actually saves money over the long term. What's more, people recognize that higher quality projects lead to increased property values. Finally, some engineering and construction firms understand that sustainability can be a selling point. It can help them win bids and enhance their business. Today, powerful design and engineering tools, 
Software, simulations, and emerging technology, such as digital twins, can provide deep and broad insights about a building's design, along with its energy and sustainability fingerprint over 30 or even 50 years. Yet the right tools also aid in understanding how various products and materials fit together to produce superior results. Whether it's triple pane glass, electrostatic windows, green roofs, or new types of concrete or building panels, Thompson says the combination of products, technologies, and choices has a major impact on a structure. Gardiner says the biggest challenges are phasing new technologies into the mix and ensuring that they are available and suitable at a local level. While the industry attempts to slog through the process of finalizing standards and specifications for new materials, many companies simply aren't aware of the options that exist and what benefits they provide. In addition, Gardiner says there are a lot of materials out there that show a lot of potential, but the question is, can they be produced in sufficient volumes, and what will happen with industry specifications? Nevertheless, architects and engineers are increasingly committed to building carbon-efficient structures. Thompson says there is a growing recognition that the industry has to move to a more sustainable framework. It's hard, and it's complex, but architects and engineers already have the digital tools available to better understand novel solutions for total carbon management and streamline their approaches. Lake adds, Sustainability has to be part of building and infrastructure projects. Many large companies that are industry leaders already understand this. The challenge now is to push the concept of sustainability into the mainstream. Curbing the cause of climate change first appeared in the fall 2021 issue of Engineering Inc. To read more and subscribe, visit www.acec.org.